Hey, welcome back, knife nerds and everyday carry people. It's your boy, the Big Canucker, and I have got myself here in this little package something that is awesome, something that I think is one of the um, best knives that I think Spyderco has ever made, um, and one of the best looking knives that I think Spyderco has ever made, in my opinion. Um, I know we've done a little bit of budget stuff. But I just decided to, I picked this up here uh, a few days ago and I thought I would give you guys a look at it and do kind of a brief review. This is probably, knife is not going to ever really hit a long-term heavy use review type knife. I mean, I bought this knife specifically for the looks of it because I think it's an absolutely gorgeous piece of uh, engineering, uh, craftsmanship, design, as well as fit and finish. And uh, I've spoken a little bit too much about it, so let's open this up. Uh, it is the Spyderco One-Eyed Jack. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. And I'm going to be putting in a bunch of kind of close-up pictures of this entire thing throughout the, the video, so have a look at it. Um, it. It is wonderful, wonderful knife. Now, this knife here was designed by um, recently passed away uh, knife maker A.T. Barr. And uh, he does uh, custom gentleman folders. And I do believe that Spyderco came and said, hey, look, let's, uh, let's see if we can recreate uh, one of your, uh, uh, you know, your customs uh, using our Spyderco, you know, process here. And uh, they did an excellent, excellent job. Now let's have a look. It is a little bit of a knife on a smaller size. And uh, we will, just to give you a kind of a size comparison, here's a really small knife here, a Martin, Marsan Sleece. Techno 2, so you can see here it's just on par with that kind of that techno size. And just to give you an idea of maybe something that everybody has to, or you know, it's close to having here, we have got a Spyderco Para 3, and you can see that the Para 3 makes this look a little bit uh, small. And even though the Para, Para 3 is not a giant knife, uh, you can see how big this uh, this is. Now, let's, uh, we'll close these up and let's have a look at this. Now, I did, oh, there's a little bit of, little bit of thumbprint on the bolster there this ah oh man I, I i just absolutely love this knife it is gorgeous and when it came up for sale here close to me here in lethbridge i had to jump on it uh you know i, I forgot to, to ask the fella permission to uh you know say his first name uh that i bought it from and uh you know and i'm not going to say his first name but uh he's an excellent excellent guy and uh he's a kind of a knife guy and he's going to be sending me some pictures on a few other knives so this one here is a definitely a quality build. All right, so let's go over here. The full length of this here is uh, 6.03 inches long. Now the closed length here is 3.54 inches. So it's, you know, like I said, it's on the smaller side of, of the knives here. It's about, you know, close to four fingers wide. Now it is only built in a tip up right hand side configuration with the wire clip. Now I was kind of, on uh you know the sleeper here the knife that i just reviewed that wire clip i was a little bit on that one and part of the reason why it just seemed like you know this is very similar to the spyderco wire clip but whatever the alloy that spyderco uses even though it does have some guild it just seems like it's a lot stiffer spring than the sleeper that i i, I did enjoy uh, now let's have a look here now the uh, blade length here is 2.49 inches, so it's like I said, it's quite small. Edge length is 2.42, but I mean, I I I, I don't wonder how they kind of measure that because the blade length here is so darn close to the uh, to the bolster, and it does have that little bit of a belly. So I don't know if they're just measuring from this point to this point, but when you actually see it like a linear line here with that little bit of a belly, I gotta say it's a little bit longer than that. Now the handle here is G10 and with these heart and spade inlays on it. So if you're a card player, this is the perfect knife to have, you know, at the, the card table with you as kind of a good luck charm. I'm not a crazy uh, card player, but I have a really good friend who's an excellent poker player and uh, him and I have ran through a lot of tournaments uh, together uh, and uh, it's either been him or I coming in first or second. Uh, so I think the next time I go play poker with my buddy Troy, we're going to be having this knife in my pocket as my good luck charm. Now, G10 in uh, white or this kind of off-white just always seems to really, uh, I love the color of it, you know. And it's almost, it's a polished G10 too as well. And these inlays 
are in there so, so well that you cannot feel any sort of um, snag or the change in texture whatsoever. I mean, uh, the Spyderco build on this one here, this happens to be built in uh, Taichung, Taiwan. They really did an excellent job with this. Just excellent. You know, there is a, you can feel a little bit of a transition between the bolster and the, the steel, but I mean, a lot of that is because you've got two different types of material. All right, so uh, CPM S30V steel, still a premium steel here. The weight is 3.7 ounces. It's a little heavier than a knife this size would be based upon the fact that you've got a really nice beefy handle with this full stainless steel uh, liner in it. And this stainless steel liner has got some file work done to it. It is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, they've really chromed this up. I hope that's kind of coming through into the uh, into the uh, uh, video. Uh, but I mean, you got to really see this uh, in person, I think, to really, really appreciate how how gorgeous this is. And like I said, it is a right hand tip up clip only, um, and it is a fully flat ground. And the only blemish that I can see on this is perhaps um, a very small scratch here. But other than that. Um, you know, the uh, blade itself is kind of a brushed, um, uh, fully flat ground, uh, leaf shaped blade. And uh, this blade here is three millimeters thick. Now it does taper to a really skinny edge right off the bat. And I was wondering, holy cow, is this really three mil? But if you look right here where the jimping kind of starts, it is three mil, but it tapers uh, really, really fast. It tapers both ways. It tapers this way as well as tapering this way. So this thing is so thin behind the edge. Now, I ended up uh, going shopping at Costco. And, and if you're ever uh, shopping at Costco, you know that they, when they give you a cardboard box to bring your groceries home, it's that really thick double walled uh, cardboard. And uh, I broke down a couple of Costco boxes with this yesterday and it absolutely flew through that cardboard. I mean, this could be a small user knife if it wasn't so gorgeous. Now, this is probably not gonna be a like a crazy safe queen of mine where I'm never gonna to touch it or you know leave it in this case and you know, yada, yada, yada. I will probably use this occasionally. I don't think I'll be doing more of the, the cardboard breaking down with it, but I just wanted to, I wanted to, to, to give it a go, but uh, I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the ergonomics on this is really, really quite nice. I mean, for for such a small knife, it really fills the hand quite well. And I didn't really notice any sort of real terrible hot spots on it. It's really, really comfortable. You know, it carries really well in the pocket because even though it is a little bit on the porky side for being such a small knife at 3.7 ounces, it's not like it's porky like it's a, you know, like it's a three and a half inch knife, you know, blade that's seven ounces. That's a real porky, porky uh, too heavy of a knife. At a 2.49 inch blade at 3.7 ounces, that's porky for the size, but it's not unmanageable. And it disappears in the pocket really, really well. And I mean, if you have the opportunity to uh, buy one of these pre-owned, um, and that's, you know, that's the thing here. Um, you know, some of the stuff that I end up bringing out on this channel, they've been discontinued. Like this one here is, I think the original MSRP on this one is three seventy nine. dollars um, I don't know what the street price was of them. I think I've seen them on sale for, you know, close to $300. There's a few of them that are still out there. I think new old stock. Um, but uh, I paid sub 200 for this. And uh, I, I think I, I got an excellent a smoking deal. Just, just based on the fact that the craftsmanship on this knife is so spectacular. Now, of course, it does have, you know, M6 uh, here, uh, some screws. That's not always the favorite. You know, the M8 here is much more desirable. But I mean, that M6 is just there to pretty much, um, it's just there to, to hold, I think, this bolster on. I'm not going to take this apart. Like, I mean, it is running on a couple of phosphor bronze washers. The action on here is, is, is really kind of, it's smooth, but it's not like drop shut. Uh, and I don't know if it's because it's, you know, a little bit too tight in the bolsters. I haven't messed around with that at all. But, you know what I mean? The the, the, the uh, centering on this is absolutely perfect. Um, the fit and finish on this is absolutely perfect. Uh, I've got no complaints with this whatsoever. And I don't think I am going to mess with this. I mean, uh, it, it does spider flick out if you can get it right. It does thumb flick out if you can, can get it right. Uh, <laughs> which I always can't. But I have been thumb flicking it. <laughs> But I mean, 
It's not a knife that I bought for a fidget factor because the fidget factor is very, very low on this. I bought it because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I bought it because I think the fit and finish on this is wonderful. I bought it because I think the design on it is, is, is beautiful. And, and I bought it to, um, to have just basically to not leave the collection. I am so impressed with this right off the bat. And if you can pick yourself up a pre-owned one in excellent condition, I would say just go for it. Uh, I don't think you'll be uh, dissatisfied with this one bit. And just as an object of art and an object of beauty, that's, I think I want to say, I mean, sometimes we buy these knives because they're functional, they're tools, they're fun, they're dangerous, they're, you know, there's so many reasons why we buy the knives. And sometimes it's beauty and that's why i bought this knife i think it's absolutely beautiful i'm going to give this knife a 10 out of 10 despite not having a great action despite i mean it's smooth don't get me wrong but it's just not drop shutty it's not flicky um you know it's very very smooth like it's it's buttery silky smooth but it's just not flicky um it doesn't have i mean the ergonomics on it are are, are really quite good but i mean it doesn't have perfect ergonomics uh, the fit and finish is excellent. I just, to me, this is a 10 out of 10 knife, and I absolutely love this knife. Oh, it's a beauty. All right, so please, please stay safe out there. Keep your stick on the ice, the shiny side up. This is the Big Knucker. Stay adios.